Cultural appropriation of Native American culture has been an issue in America for more than a century. From multiple sports teams adopting the names of tribes to people donning traditional Native dresses, the discussion of what's acceptable or simply inappropriate continues. That's the topic of this week's in-depth conversation with moderator Susan Godot and her panel of guests. Thank you, Rich. We have a lot to discuss, and what a great panel we have to help us sort through all this um, issue of appropriation. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Wendy Ponka on the far. She's Osage Nation with Ponka Design. We have Brent Learned in the middle. He's Cheyenne Arapaho. He's a Native American artist. And then we have Tom Ferris uh, with the First Americans Museum, and he is Oto, Missouri, Cherokee. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you. I'd like to start by each of you telling just a little bit about yourselves and what you do so everyone knows who's uh, who we're hearing from today. And Wendy, we'll begin with you. Yes, well, I, as you said, I'm a member of the Osage Nation. I uh, am a fashion designer and a retired professor from the Institute of American Indian Arts located in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I have my bachelor's degree from the Kansas City Art Institute and I have a master's in art therapy. You went to Parsons School of Design, right? Uh, as well, yes, for fashion illustration. I know that from TV, that's, so that, that's pretty awesome. Thank so you. Thank you for being with us. Brent, how about you? You have work in the Smithsonian, right? I've got work uh, in a lot of museums across the country. I'm a graduate of the University of Kansas. I've been doing uh, art professionally for about 31 years. Uh, I'm a Cheyenne Arapaho from Oklahoma. My mother was the first Cheyenne Arapaho uh, chief of the uh, tribe chairperson. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That's awesome. And Tom, you're with the First Americans Museum, which is a national deal. And what does that mean to you? And tell us about yourself. Well, so that's just my latest gig. I've worked um, in Native American art uh, and retail for about 20 years. I've been a professional artist for the last 10. Mm -hmm. um, also have art in several museums and across the country. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I get to go and play and uh, represent my friends every day and work with um, other Native artists and it's a, it's a lot of fun. That's wonderful. Brent, um, let's talk about, let's start with you, talk about when you're creating your artwork. When you're, and you do a kind of a contemporary, modern um, type of, of work, um, what are you trying to, story are you trying to tell? What are you trying to represent? Well, when I paint, I, I do various styles, but I'm known for my bright, bold color pieces. And uh, what I'm trying to convey is to try to tell stories of my ancestors, give them a voice, because they didn't have one. So I'm kind of telling the stories through my art, giving them a voice. And you know, I always like to tell young artists, when you go out into the community, you're an ambassador of your tribe, so you're telling those stories of your people. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that I like to do is to try to tell stories that haven't been told. You know, the, the last two projects I put together were, one was uh, a few years ago, uh, the Sand Creek Massacre. I, I did that with several other Cheyenne Arapaho artists. We had gotten together and talked about, you know, doing a, doing a show like this because for one, it hasn't been done by a tribe of tribal members coming together and, and expressing a story that had uh, uh, such an impact on us with all the trauma and tribulations because it still affects our, our tribal members today. And so with that, I, I go, well, there hadn't been a show about the Battle of the Wachita. And uh, it really wasn't much of a battle. And, and right now our, uh, our, ch our uh, chief is wanting to change the name, which I agree with. It, it, it wasn't, it was a genocide because mm. they came in because we're all descendants from the uh, Sand Creek Massacre and of the uh, Battle of the Wachita, which happened right here in Oklahoma. So the genocide of the Wachita, and that's like the um, uh, race riots in Tulsa are now the race massacre, the Tulsa race massacre. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, so that's something that, that relates to that. Now you're wearing a shirt, you're also uh, uh, spreading into some fashion here, huh? Yeah, well I, I did this a few years ago, right before COVID, I had put together a show in Chicago, but it was had to be postponed because mm -hmm. of COVID. Mm -hmm. and from that I just kind of moved on and did some other things but uh, I do dabble in uh, fashion I do make uh, certain uh, images and uh, that are put on skirts and shirts and ties and uh, right. things of that sort and, and a lot of artists are doing that and that's a nice segue over to Wendy let's talk about the fashion you design what Native American um, influences uh, do you put into your designs and, and what kind of designs do you put out that well, scarf is something you designed, which I love. Thank you. Well, I do my, all my own hand silk screen printing on silk linen and wool and, uh, and cotton, of course. And I also uh, do complete tailoring from the ground up. I'm 
produce my own patterns and everything. But um, I also do jewelry, traditional Native American clothing, and then of course contemporary clothing. What do you try to, the designs you put in, Native American designs, um, where do those come from? From my tribe. Okay. And some, I use some other tribal, like really old, um, like petroglyph symbols and or carvings from the uh, Mayans and, and Peruvian Indians. And um, I, but I twist them a little bit, change them a little bit to be my own style. And uh, so that's the symbolism that I use. Okay. And Tom, what about you? What Native American culture informs your art? I kind of stick with what I, my own tribes, um, the uh, Cherokees, we have, uh, I like to use our, our language a lot just because we're one of the few tribes with our own written language. So mm -hmm. uh, it lends itself well to a visual media. So I, I uh, incorporate Cherokee language quite a bit. But the Otos have some really beautiful um, ribbon work um, history and continues today. Um, so I can incorporate those patterns. So I really draw on those two. In my own tribal. So you're wearing some beautiful jewelry, some beautiful <laughs> right. turquoise jewelry, distinctly Native American. Now I want to get into appropriation and sure. I'm going to stay with you. What does appropriation mean to you? So I had this, um, I actually read this, and I thought it was a very simple and elegant way to put this. Um, and you can compare it to A Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. So when Jack Skellington discovers Christmas and really loves it and is enamored with it, that's great. That's appreciation. But when he tries to take it over and make it his own, that's appropriation. And so you kind of want to be like Jack Skellington at the beginning okay. rather than the end. Does that mean I could not wear that necklace if I liked no. it? No. So that's the thing is this jewelry was originally made um, as part of tourism trade. I mean, Sa Santa Fe developed cultural tourism in the 30s, 20s, 30s. So they started making jewelry for that specific reality. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's a long history of um, native made items that were made specifically for tourist trade. Uh, now, a lot of the designs and a lot of the, the construction were based on things um, out of ceremony. So this is obviously, this is a Southwestern piece, not my tribal tradition. Okay. But this replicates a bear claw necklace, which is um, relevant to the Oto Missouri's. And so it's uh, kind of an interesting crossover piece. Brent, what is the line between appreciation and appropriation? Is that a blurred line or is it a distinct line? I, I think it's kind of a blurred line because as an artist, because you, you're talking about an art, you know, but you're also talking about a culture. And, and what people like to do is they like to, to group Indians all together because there's 500 nations here in North America. Mm. We're all not the same. It's like uh, Tom just said, they had, the, they're distinguished because they have their own written language. You know, ours is more oral, more taught to you. And so, you know, everyone likes to throw Indians all in together like we're all one and we all think the same. We're all, no, there, there's 500 different nations, so 500 different ways of people are, are going to react to it. Mm -hmm. And as for uh, it being an art, you know, you, you get, you know, like for myself, you know, again, this is my opinion. I, I grew up looking at other art forms, getting inspiration, and just kind of taking what they did and then making it my own. Mm -hmm. And so and when you throw a, a label on it, because we're, we're in a society that likes to throw labels on things. Uh, just real quick, uh, you know, we're, you know, you keep referring to us as natives. Some like to be referred to as natives, indigenous. I like to be referred to as an, an American Indian. Okay. And the reason why is, is, what do you, what would you call a black guy from America? Well, it used to be African American, African but now American. they prefer black. Yeah. Well, what do you call a Canadian who's black? French? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, you call him Canadian. Canadian, yeah. No, the United States is the only country in the world where they put a label in front of somebody's ethnic group mm -hmm. in, in and I, I never understand. And all we're doing is just changing the labels, changing titles. So how would how would non-natives know if we don't know what we don't know what someone likes to be addressed? Does would you take offense? Like, did you take offense when I was saying Native well, American? You, 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 or, but you, you but you corrected me. So you, that's you you correct them as how you would want to be introduced. I would say, hey, I, I'm Cheyenne or mm -hmm. tribe, an American, American Indian. Indian. And, and the reason why is because my mother, she grew up as an American Indian. Mm -hmm. 
and then again, they changed that title because it, it gets to a point where you, you can read the, the latest tabloid and it would say, oh, uh, such and such, a native from Austin or native from, well, I, the first thing that comes to mind, are, I'm like thinking, are they an Indian? What tribe? Yeah. See, it's got so generalized and so mm. ma manipulated to where you, you don't know. Yeah. What but, do you think about this. Uh, I, I want to go to Wendy real quick. We haven't heard from her. Wh where's the line for you? Is it a distinct line for you or is it blurred? Well, first of all, we're all speaking English. We're not speaking native languages, so it's a matter of semantics. Yeah. But I personally am Osage, which is, that's what I would be preferred to be called, Osage, or Washaji in our traditional language. But as far as being upset about what people would call us, refer to us, I, I can't control that. And everybody has their own biased so so when we're interacting you know america is just this melting pot but the tribes are sovereign nations so when we talk about appropriate so so i'm guessing none of you has a problem with me buying your scarf and wearing it or or buying your art or buying well, no as an artist clothes. that's, that's you've got a polo sweater on that has this yeah is that appropriation by polo uh, yes. yes how so well because that's not you know ralph ralph lauren isn't native uh, but what they're doing is they're just playing upon, you know, that uh, the problem is, is that, well, natives, American Indians, whatever you want to use, none of them are correct because we're one of the few ethnicities that maintain a tribal identity. And so we are our tribal members. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's what we should be called. But that's a lot to ask of people who, you know, are brand new meeting you. So um, the, the short answers are not really a good answer. But um, yeah, it's, there's, there's a long history of, of uh, the dominant culture of this country really um, embracing the image of that noble savage thing. And that's what that sweater's playing upon. That's just a throwback to those summer camps and uh, redskins and all these fantastic mascots that we get to endure. Yeah, let, let's talk about that, Brent. Let's talk about that. Sweater. I, I, I look at it as cultural appreciation because there used to be a time to where dominant society didn't understand American Indian cultures. Again, there's 500 different tribes, and so to try to understand one or two is gonna be kinda of hard. But they, it was a way of them appreciating it and trying to understand it, so they used the imagery and kinda of took it and kinda of made it their own and put it on products and everything. Well, we're at a time now to where you have a cancel culture who wants to cancel everything. They wanna get rid of it. They're like, that's no, that's wrong. Who are they to say to another person's art because there was an artist that made this, that designed that, to say that's wrong. And I, I'm an artist who doesn't believe in censorship of any kind. Okay. Wendy, what say you to that sweater? Um, I can't judge on it what people wear. You know, I can only design what I like to wear, but I'm, I don't uh, judge other people's taste in apparel. I would just uh, appreciate it if they would just buy my designs. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I love that. So we have a, just a few minutes left, so I want to go far over that line and talk about people wearing headdress for Halloween costumes. Um, ooh, that was a nice well, reaction so from to you. Me, that, that is a gateway to that, and that's my problem with it. In the same way, like mascots are the gateway to... Well, the uh, significance of a headdress, I like, in, when we, Brett and I were talking before, that's like wearing a Congressional Medal of Honor when you right. didn't earn it, yes. right? But also, that is one of the most identifiably native images, but it's a really small percentage of native culture. I mean, uh, that's mostly a Plains um, tribal um, history, and that's just the middle strip of, the, of America. You have the East Coast and West Coast tribes. You have all these other tribes that don't have that tradition. But that is what people identify as, as Indian. That's over, the, that, for someone to dress up Native American and they're not, I see it on TV shows. Uh, they're making fun of someone who dressed up when they were a kid <laughs> as an American Indian with the headdress and the outfit, which I'm old enough, that was normal back in the day, but now people are getting in trouble Well, for see, it. that goes to, you know, a few years ago, I did a project with the University of Oklahoma to where I was in, part of a uh, cross-cultural exchange program going over to Siberia, meeting with the Barat people. And one of the things I was to do was to inter uh, interview 25 different artists. And with those 25 artists, I asked them basic questions. You know, what's your name? What tribe are you? How old are you? Where are you from? And the last question was, is, well, being that you're from that tribe, can you tell me a story that makes you proud to be from that, from that peop from those people? 
out of 25 people that I interviewed, only three could really answer that. And I'm like, well, you know, you, you're, you're telling people you're an, you're an artist, you're an Indian artist, you've been doing this for X amount of years, you can't tell me why you're proud to be from that people or even what stories are significant from that tribe that you, you'd like to share because you're an ambassador, you're, you're educating dominant society. And I said, it's okay not to know because one of the things I wanted to get from this was to show that we need to teach American history, Indian history, to a lot of, of kids. Yeah. Because and, and, and going on the, the the difference between a cultural appropriation, a cultural appreciate, again, dominant society doesn't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know what what is appropriate and what's not. It's so much to cover and we're not gonna do it in, in these few minutes. But you know, I feel a little bit less worried from speaking to all of you. I, I can go now I would look silly if I dressed in full Indian regalia as you know, but there have been there's high fashion American Indian, Native American, high fashion. There are things like that. That shirt, I love that shirt. I love the necklace. But you know, if you wear it all together, you, use your best discretion, I well, guess, and and give people the benefit of the doubt, Tom. Maybe. Yeah, but also, I mean, a mis a mishmash of like of those kind of cultures might be kind of an odd thing, and that's usually when um, Native people can pick out when non-native people are <laughs> yeah. doing every like that's a headdress and a squash blossom and pucker toe moccasins that does not go together we don't know <laughs> but we but, should try to learn yes. like we learn about other cultures right correct yes all right i would like to thank all of you for your time um and, and kind of educating me and i hope some other folks uh, along with myself on this issue and um uh thank you again very much it's been great Happy to thank, thank you. you thank you for having thank us you.